Hello everyone, welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, where the Top Mock Studios F22A recently got an update. It is in version 1.1.8 now, with some improvements. And I am taking the opportunity of this update to do a range test again, because on my previous range test video, people said in the comments that they got different results, and I would like to verify that. Basically, the problem was I was trying to go as fast as possible and trying to figure out what the optimal speed would be uh, during that test. And so I might not have gotten the best results. And Wololo10 recently uh, said in the comments to the video that they got 3,000 kilometers at Mach 1.4. In nautical miles, that translates to 1,620. And so we plot a course here that's more than that. So we expect to fall short basically where the white line is. So the stated range here. And the, th uh, the previous video, I was trying to figure out what the optimal speed would be. It was clearly not Mach 2. Somebody on the comments to that video said that it was either subsonic or Mach 2. Well, we're throwing up out subsonic. We're trying to find a supersonic optimal speed. And so obviously subsonic, it's not going to consume as much fuel. Therefore, it's going to go further. But the F-22A is supposed to be able to supercruise, which technically means that it can uh, cruise without afterburner and cruise uh, superson at son supersonic speeds without afterburner, I mean. Uh, so we want to have it do that and get the best possible range. And so I think Mach 1.4 is reasonable. Mach 2 is not reasonable. It's definitely going to guzzle gas and not be able to get very far like that. And uh, we saw that previously as well. It's really, really heavy on the fuel consumption if you try to go Mach 2. We will see our course does have some uh, sites along the way that I've plotted, but we're probably going to be going high enough that we're not going to be able to see those. And yeah, but just in case we can spot them from really high altitude, we will see. Uh, my configuration is uh, the weathered Elmendorf version of the livery and 10% payload. Really, I wanted to zero all these out, but as soon as I went uh, out and came back in, it wanted it all filled out. So I've decided to just set it to 10%. And so it's, it's not as low as it could go, but it's probably good enough. So uh, we are going to go with real world weather. I'm going to go a little bit earlier so that we aren't going to be in the dark when we get there. And let's find out how it goes. Okay, so here we are at Edwards. We do verify that we have all the fuel. And let's just get started. Okay, we are off. And it's auto flapping. And there we are, the weathered version is looking good. It's a little bit choppy here for some reason. But yes, that is the F-22. And we are climbing. We've got external tanks and everything. Wow, we are going a lot faster than I thought we were. <laughs> Just as I was checking how it looked outside. Keep in mind that the last time I tried this was many versions of this plane ago. And so people reporting the speeds might be trying a newer version with certain things changed, especially since the flight model, you know, the whole flight model thing has changed in the most recent sim update. Now we need about two hours of range to get where we're going. And right now, if we take a look at the uh, fuel flow, we've got one hour at this altitude. Okay, at Mach 1, we're at 48,000 feet already. Main reason I do the range tests is to see what slot planes might fit in when it comes to an around the world flight with 80 different planes. I like the whole around the world and 80 planes idea. And so. Yeah, just choosing which slot they go into is why I check out their range. And I prefer flights about one to two hours. So that determines which planes I use where. So we're creeping up in height and speed, Mach 1.33, uh, approaching 54,000 feet. Trying to be gentle with it. We're nowhere near being able to get two hours of range right now, though. As we lose mass, of course, it'll be easier to hold the speed without consuming so much fuel. So there's that, too. 
Okay, we are at Mach 1.41. We are at only 53,000 feet though. Uh, since it's increasing speed, I'll try and climb a bit more. Uh, yeah, fuel consumption is too high to last two hours, which we would need to cover the 1,620 nautical miles or 3,000 kilometers. So, yeah, right now we're falling short of what people said. Now, I need a sort of altitude. I'll keep climbing. I'll try to get better performance like that. But uh, if we're gonna hold 1.4 now, we need, we can't go up too quickly. It looks like I could add more thrust. We we're not maxed out. That uh, I'm just trying to sort of moderate it. I don't know exactly how people climbed. That is another variable. I will run it to depletion, and then we are going to see how well it glides. So, yeah, I'll just try and find an airfield of opportunity after we run out of fuel. While well, we're getting about a 33 knot benefit, mostly the wind is a crosswind, 72 knots, so... Well, it's just a bunch of clouds around right now. But this is how we look. Uh, well, we've got some turbulence. It doesn't really want to go too much higher than this and maintain Mach 1.4. I could lose speed and climb. Anyway, we're passing Grand Canyon Airport, KC, uh, KGCN. And we're up here at 55,000 Mach 1.4. Uh, well, suddenly it jumped to Mach 1.45 for some reason. We, we had sort of a jolt and it went up. Well, now I'll take the opportunity to climb a bit. So we've managed to drift up to 57,000 at Mach 1.4, still holding that. The fly-by-wire sometimes slips down a little bit, but I'm going to try and keep it here. The clouds are clearing, so we actually get to see the landscape a bit finally. Alright, we've got some Rockies here, but we still got a long way to go. We're at 57,600 feet, but we've got far less than an hour's left of fuel, and basically we're here. So, yeah, it's not going so well for me so far. There is the possibility of going up first using extra fuel, uh, get up to 65,000 and try and sort of moderate our speed to Mach 1.4 once we get there instead of sort of creeping up as we go along. This is more of a Concorde style flight profile where we creep up as we go along as the plane gets lighter. But we'll see how it goes. Again, we will get lighter and that will improve our performance. So it's difficult to tell right now exactly how far we're going to get. Okay, we are over Colorado right now and that is the Arkansas River beside us with the farmland there. And we're going to be headed into Kansas pretty soon. Right now, 58,900 feet almost, and Mach 1.41, so we're climbing a bit to keep to Mach 1.4. Um, we have a little bit over half an hour of fuel left, so we're at a ground speed of 845. Uh, the wind is pushing us right now, but only with 33 knots, so... Again, if we flew further north, maybe we would get better winds and that would give us more range, but that's sort of cheating, so. Alright, behold Kansas, and we are currently at 59,300 feet, uh, Mach 1.41, so we're drifting up a little bit, and we are turning at Monument Rocks National Natural Park, maybe? Uh, it only says Monument Rocks Net 
National Natural on the map. And so we need to make a little bit of a turn. And we continue. We have less than half an hour worth of fuel at the moment. Okay, we have reached 60,000 feet. Still climbing a bit here. So finally drifted up to 60,000. Okay, well, I've gotten the fuel low alert. You can see that the fuel status has turned yellow there. Again, I'm just going to continue until depletion and then we'll glide down. Joker fuel, yeah. High altitude, yes. Um, above 60,000, and consider that high altitude. So uh, we are at 60,890 and climbing a bit. So we should get to 61,000. We have less than 20 minutes with fuel, uh, closer to 15. And currently we are not yet in Missouri. We are still in Kansas. So yeah, long way off from the desired range. Again, we weren't planning to make it to KIAD. Uh, we're certainly not getting 3,000 kilometers. So I did something different. Or it could have just been the wind. Well, Lolo10 had said, don't stop gaining altitude. And uh, here she finished the flight at 55,000 feet. Well, I'm way above 55,000 feet. I certainly did not stop gaining altitude. So I theoretically got better performance as far as that's concerned. And again, I kept it to Mach 1.4 throughout, which was the specified speed. So I don't know. Okay, we have hit bingo fuel. 1,700 pounds and counting down. We're at 61,000 feet, Mach 1.41, and we have just entered Missouri. We're past 62,000 feet, Mach 1.41 right now. Depending on how it glides, uh, the best place to stop is probably St. Louis right now. We might be able to go a little bit further than that. St. Louis is 80 nautical miles, 82. We could probably go further. Now we're going to do some gliding and see what I can do dead stick with this. Which, considering I haven't done that before, I think, uh, it's going to be interesting. 64, 61 pounds. Well, it doesn't look like it's got any unusable fuel as far as what's listed there, and that's good. Okay, there we go. We will go down gently and see where we end up. We are once again below Mach 1. And so we've got KCPS and KBLV as potential landing locations. And I think I'll try for a KBLV. We are at 30,000 feet. And of course still descending. Well, it seems to be Scott Air Force Base. So that's appropriate. And let me see if I can get their gear down or not. Uh, well, yeah, uh, let's do some air brakes here. I don't know if the hydraulics work is all. Running gear. Emergency handle, all G. Well, okay. Okay, there we go. Oh boy. Oh, I think I've misjudged. 
the situation. Okay. Uh, well, there's a runway, but uh, yeah, I'm stalling here. Okay, well, I didn't do such a good job of that, but we have a result. <laughs> so, uh, let's go from Edwards and end up. It was mostly a straight course, even though I had plotted some some sites along the way, even though we didn't see anything. Uh, but yeah, it's not going to be a big difference. And Scott Air Base was where we ended up crashing short of. That's 1,368 nautical miles. It's not a big difference from what uh, was claimed. I think underpowered flight, if we, I had optimized the climb a little bit, we could have done 1,341 nautical miles. And let me just see what that is in kilometers, since that is the units that was given. It was 3,000 kilometers, so let's see. Uh, so I got basically 2,500 kilometers. So maybe I can do better, but it's tough if you can tell me how I might optimize things. I got to a pretty decent height, and so yeah. But at least we got this much, 1,341 nautical miles at Mach 1.4 for most of it. And if we take a look at how long the flight was, it was 1 hour and 47 minutes to cover that. So there you have it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.